everything that we do is going to end up going back to reducing radicals. It's going to be the last step of almost every process, every problem. And like 80% of what we do from now on, you're going to end up reducing a radical at the end of the week. So we have to be able to do it. Talk me through it. How are you going to reduce the square root of 108? Find, find the perfect square. Yeah. Okay, find the perfect square. Does right. anybody know a perfect square right. off the top of their head? Nine and what? Nine times twelve. Okay. I can deal with that, but I know that there's more times twelve. What times twelve give me twelve? Four and three. That's why I got nine times four times three. And I'm taking the square root of three. I can go from right here though. What's the square root of four? Two. Square root of nine. Three. What do I do to the two and the three? You multiply them. Square root of six radical. What's square root 36? 9 and 4. Oh. <laughs> Alright, 192. Let's talk about 192. What times 1 will give me 192? You have to grab a calculator. Grab a calculator. Don't just sit and stare at me. Let's go. I know you're getting tired. Bear <coughs> with me. i got a couple calculators up here on the podium. Four times forty-eight. Either way. What gives you forty-eight though? Uh, Six and eight. Six and eight. She's going four times. Remember the rule, if you ever have two of anything underneath the radical, it's worth one on the outside. So I can pull out four. a four and thank you, a four. two. And what is left inside? Three. three. So I end up at eight radical three. Right, not too bad. Square root of 50, do that one in our head. What perfect square is what? 25 times. Square root is 25. Five, five. five radical yeah. two. Pretty simple. 32, perfect square. Good one. Perfect square is 16 times. Square root of 16. Four, four. four radical two. 392. What times will give me 98? Two times 49. I'm calling it done. Yeah, because what's the square root of 49? Yeah. What's the square root of 4? 14. 14. Radical. I'm assuming we can all reduce radicals. Is that fair? Yes. Yeah. It might take a little bit of time, but we'll get used to it. Okay, that's going to be the last thing you do every time. Reduce the radical. Well, how are we going to get the radicals? Because, well, we're going to have... We're going to end up going back to working with equations like you're in algebra class again. Now, we're in geometry, so we're still in our algebra. I need to solve this for M. It's a two-step equation. I always thought my kids work from a far away to your variable. So the 10's right next door, but the 7's over here. How do I undo a minus 7? Plus 7. Plus 7. Plus seven. Draw your 10, add 7. Whenever you do the one side, you have to do the other. So I end up at 10 m squared equals 10. What's the 10 doing to the m squared? Dividing it. Times it. It's timesing, so we will. Divide by 10. Divide by 10. Pretty simple. So cancel. M squared. I end up at M squared equals 1. Now you know the answer to this. Just think through it. What is the opposite of squaring something? Radicaling it or square rooting it? <coughs> square root the left. Now, let's think about this. 
Everybody agree? Three squared. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. Well, what's the square root of nine? Three. So what's the square root of three squared? Nine. Three. Okay, let's try this again. What is two squared? Four. What's the square root of four? Two. So what's the square root of two squared? Two. Two. So what's the square root of n squared? Yeah. What's the square root of one? Yeah, because whatever I do to one side, I have to do the other. So if I square root the left, I have to square root the right. So let's one more time so we can kind of figure this out. Five squared equals? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. So the square root of twenty-five is? Five. So the square root of five squared? Five. So if you square root something squared, you get? That's the something. Squared. Yeah, so if I had donut with sprinkles squared, and I took the square root of a donut with sprinkles squared, I'm going to get a donut with sprinkles. Donut with sprinkles. Not squared. Not squared. Something squared, square rooted, gives you that something. All right, two step equation. We can do this one. Another easy one. What's the first thing you're going to do to solve for s? Plus two. Add two. Four and squared equals four hundred. Next step. Divide by four and squared equals one hundred. Okay, how do you unsquare something? Two. Whatever you do to the left, you have to do to the right. And equals and square one hundred is and you're not dividing by two, you're square rooting. Add nine, I get thirty-six. Four. Divide by four, I get nine. Square root? Yeah. You guys are good. You can do them in your head. This one I want to do is no. This one I want to do. So, solve for n, first step. Add ten. Add ten. Add ten to the left. Add ten to the right. I get 100 n squared okay. equals 1. That's my next step. Divide by 100. What's 1 divided by 100? 100. Well, let's just leave it as a fraction. Isn't it just 1 divided by 100? Okay, so logic says what's our next step? You know the answer. I gotta get the animal by itself. What am I gonna have to do? Square root it. Square root it. Aha. You're scared. But if I told you that you could rewrite that as the square root of one over the square root of one hundred, would it make it a little less scary? Yeah. Yeah, because what is the square root of n squared? N. What's the square root of one? One. What's the square root of one hundred? Ten. Well, let's get it. Try another one of those. Oh, that's what you're afraid of. Okay, solving it for n. What's your first step? Add five. So I get one, yeah. So 25 n squared equals one. What's my next step? One over 25. Divide by 25, I'm going to get n squared equals one over 25. Square root, square root. Square root. And equals one over five. Now three square root equations. Last step take square root of everything. Today it'll be really pretty for you. Last thing I want to talk about. The one new thing in the day. We're going to talk about geometric mean. Okay, we're going to have geometric sequences, geometric mean. Uh, the main reason that we're going to talk about the geometric mean is because we're going to find the geometric mean between two numbers in the geometric series. That's not going to mean a whole lot to you. But eventually we're going to figure out that if you have a triangle, you draw an altitude from a right angle of the triangle to the opposite side, you get three proportional, or sorry, three similar triangles, and their sides are all proportional, and they actually end up making a geometric sequence. So, all that being said, and you guys not paying attention to the word of it, because I'm talking another language, 
we need to be able to find the geometric mean. In your notes, write this down. Oh, it's a tough one. It's very confusing. It's very complex. Scientific way. To find the geometric mean between two numbers. Everybody agrees? So then x squared would equal 225. Okay, now I'm just going to explain this and please don't let me confuse you. 225 is a perfect square. 15. Everybody agrees that if x would equal 15, x squared would equal 225, right?
can I have a side that is 15 inches long? Yes. Can I have a side that's negative 15 inches? No. 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 So we're not going to worry about the negatives here. So I just kind of understand that they are there. All right. Can you guys do your yes. yes. Can you solve square root, or sorry, equations with an x squared them? Mm -hmm. Geometric mean, doable? Yes. All right. Call the day right there. Mm -hmm. My eyes go too.